This video is published under the Creative Commons license BY and CSA, which means attribution, non-commercial and share-alike. Third-party material has been used for which the permission is specified explicitly for every diagram, photograph or whatever has been used. Please mention the author as Andreas Pfennig, Products, Environment and Processes, Department of Chemical Engineering, Université de Liège, Belgium. A disclaimer applies. Welcome again to this lecture on thermal unit operations. In previous lectures I have derived the mccabe tiller method and I have shown how one can determine the number of theoretical stages that is required for, to solve a certain distillation task. Today I would like to start to deal with the fenske underwood gilliland shortcut method, or for short, the FUG shortcut. What is that? Well, that's a simple set of equations and graphs that can be used to estimate the number of theoretical stages as a function of reflux ratio for that given separation task with some severe assumptions. So there are quite significant assumptions that we need to make in order to derive the corresponding equations. And the advantage is that the final equations are so simple that you can evaluate them on the calculator or with some simple Excel spreadsheet. So no iteration, no graphical method, just some simple equations that you can evaluate. So that's the goal, to derive some simple equations that allow to determine the minimum number of, reflux, uh, of stages, the minimum reflux ratio, and in the end to correlate the number of theoretical stages and the reflux ratio with these limiting values for a given separation task. The first thing I want to deal with is actually the part of Fenske to determine the minimum number of theoretical stages. Now, how has that been achieved in the McAptile method? This is shown here. Here we have the y-x diagram as before. We have our equilibrium curve and we know that at infinite reflux ratio, that means total reflux, the operating lines coincide with the diagonal. Okay. So we have to plot our theoretical stages between the diagonal and the equilibrium curve for the total reflux case. And we have to do that between xd and xb they are specified by the separation task that we have to solve. So that way we are able to determine the minimum number of theoretical stages stepping between balance curve, which is a diagonal, a balance line actually, and the equilibrium curve and producing these individual red steps as they are shown here. In this case, the minimum number of theoretical stages is 4, but of course it depends on all the parameters and the equilibrium. Now the question is how one can derive a simple equation describing that. In order to achieve that, we can set up the balance, of course, on the one hand side. We will do that in just a moment. And on the other hand side, we have to make some assumption about the equilibrium. And that's actually the severe assumption. We have to say something about a simple equation describing the equilibrium. And as for single stage uh, distillation, we want to assume an ideal uh, equilibrium to a certain extent. We want to assume that the relative volatility is constant. But that's that we will see in just a moment. Okay, so having said that, let's start setting up the balances. In order to set up the balances, we first would need to um, describe, of course, the um, balances for that column. So let me first draw the top section of that column. It looks like that, for example. We have our distillate, or well, vapor actually, that is being removed. It is condensed. And then we have a certain reflux, R dot. Since we are at total reflux, we don't have any distillate product. The composition that we want to achieve in the end is known. But for this limiting case, the reflux ratio approaching infinity with some finite value for the r dot, we don't need to account for the d dot because that is approaching zero. Okay, so we want to set up the balance for that and I should perhaps first plot the control volume that we want to evaluate like that. And then there are of course two flow rates that need to be considered. On the one hand side, it's an entering flow rate, the g dot, and it's the leaving flow rate, which is the del l dot. And we want to cut on the other hand side just below stage n. And with that I would like to set up the balances. We 
as usual, want to assume that V are in steady state. So you want to assume the light, left side of the equal sign is zero. Zero equals, so no change inside, equals what is entering minus what is leaving. So entering is the G dot, leaving is the L dot, and that's of course the overall balance. Then we can also set up the corresponding balance for the flow rate of component I. Again, steady state also for component I, so zero equals. And now we know that we have to multiply the flow rates with the corresponding mole fractions. And this, in this case, is Y n plus one I. Yeah, the last stage where we uh, cut our column for the balance is n, so the G dot is coming from the stage below sets, so that is uh, y n plus 1, since we count from top to bottom. Minus L dot times the corresponding liquid composition, which is x n i. This is the balance for the flow rates of component i. And now we have to solve that. For the first equation that's easy, we realize that g dot equals L dot. Well, you might have guessed that, since there's only one flow inside, one flow outside, this means if no accumulation occurs, so we are in steady state, the left side of the equal sign is zero, these have to be identical, more or less, obviously. The next thing is now that we know g dot equals L dot, so that is the same as that, so we can divide by that, and we obtain zero equals y n plus one i minus x n i, or if you solve that for y n plus one i, you obtain y n plus one i equals x n i. What does this tell us? This tells us if you operate a distillation column at total reflux, then these flow rates are identical with respect to the flow rates as well as to the compositions. And that is of course quite important. It's an important case, as already mentioned in a previous lecture, because, well, this is a frequent case encountered if you want to characterize the efficiency of specific column internals. You characterize the column internals by just having a distillation column operate that at infinite reflux. You don't need to have any feed, you don't have any product streams. If you just operate it, you just boil it up and condense it, and so you produce the internal flow rates, but you don't have any external flow rates. It's a simple case, so to speak. And then you just evaluate the concentration profile along the column, specifically the composition at the top and at the bottom, and then you construct the number of theoretical stages in the Mercaptitic diagram at total reflux. That means just as shown before. You know the height of the column or your details of the internals, and that way you can determine how much internals you need in order to have one theoretical stage. You just divide the amount by the number of theoretical stages, and that way you wind up with the corresponding efficiency of your internals. And that is important that you actually only have to sample one of the phases, the vapor or the liquid, whatever you prefer. Usually it's a liquid because there is sample amount is a little bit larger, or easy to, easier to obtain a larger amount, so you sample the liquid and you know that the vapor composition is identical. And that's of course relevant in that case, because that is a typical case for characterizing the efficiency of column internals. So we know in that case these compositions are identical. So that characterizes the operating line, and you could have written that down directly because we realized actually that the operating lines are the diagonal, and this is exactly why y equals x is the equation describing the diagonal. So you could have written that down actually directly. But here we have derived it to make it a little bit clearer, hopefully. The second thing that I want to assume for deriving this uh, Fenske uh, equation is that I want to assume ideal equilibrium. Like in this construction that I have shown previously on the slide, we want to use a successively balance curve, this one, and equilibrium curve. Equilibrium curve I mentioned already, we want to assume that the relative volatility is constant. So we want to assume that the alpha 1, 2 equals, well, how is it defined? It's k1 divided by k2, that that is constant. K1, K2 are the partition coefficients. We know that already, and you should also know that from the chemical engineering thermodynamics course, of course, and they are defined just as the ratio of the corresponding compositions in both phases. For the vapor-liquid equilibrium, this is for K1, it's Y1 divided by X1. 
the k2 equals correspondingly y2 divided by x2. And we know, of course, that y2 is exactly 1 minus y1 for a binary system that we are regarding uh, and divided by 1 minus x1. So we made an assumption, actually, we assume that we are in the binary system because then this alpha is the only variable describing the equilibrium. So we have to assume that as well. And now we can take these two equations, plug them in here. What do we obtain? We realize that alpha 1, 2 equals y1 divided by x1 divided by 1 minus y1 divided by 1 minus x1, which is identical to y1 times 1 minus x1 divided by x1 times 1 minus y1. Okay, now I find the, all the indices a little bit too confusing since here we have only index 1, so from now on we regard only component 1. And then this equation simplifies and we can simply write that alpha equals x1, uh, not x1, uh, y of course and no one times 1 minus x divided by x times 1, 1 minus y. What we can do next is we can separate the x and the y's and we want to write it in the following way. We want to write y divided by 1 minus y equals alpha x divided by 1 minus x. The y divided by 1 minus y is on this side and then you have to multiply this by x so you have alpha times x divided by 1 minus x if you bring that to the other side of the equal sign and that's exactly what I have written down. And that applies actually to stage n. So that's actually to be written for stage n. And let's for the moment assume that also the alpha is a function of the stage. We can later simplify that still further so that is, that is constant but let's now keep it with the stage n. So that's the stage index n that we write here. And this is actually one of the working equations that you want to use. The other working equation we have already available, it's y n plus 1. And also here we want to skip the index 1. It applies for all components and we have agreed that we want to only regard component 1. And also there, of course, this equation has to hold. We have to derived it above y n plus 1 equals x n. And actually we already here directly see that we have means now to step through the uh, separation column, the distillation column. If we, from, for example, start out, well, let's start with yn. And we are able to determine the xn from that. Yes, yeah, so you can solve that for xn. Then we plug this into this equation and are able to determine the yn plus 1. And now we can, of course, plug this yn plus 1 into this equation and solve that for an index just one higher than the n, and we obtain the xn plus 1. We can plug that in here, xn plus 1, and we'll obtain the yn plus 2. Okay. So by uh, alternating, uh, alternatingly using these equations in succession, we are able to step through the uh, separation column, the distillation column, which is, of course, apparent that that has to be possible because this is the balance equation and that is the equilibrium equation. We only have to combine them uh, one after the other again and again and that way we are able to step through the McCapp-Tilo diagram for the specific case of total reflux. And now we just have to apply that, so to speak, to the different individual theoretical stages. Let me scroll down so that we still see these equations and see how to apply them. We want to start out with n equals n min. At the lowest stage, uh, theoretical stage, what do we have? The liquid leaving is actually our bottom product. So we know xn equals xb. Everything for component 1, of course, we define that. Also, I would like to leave out the minimum. We have written this, so all capital N's are actually the n min just for simplifying notation. And then we can write down the equilibrium equation for this stage capital N, and what we obtain is that yn divided by 1 minus yn equals 
alpha capital N equals Xn divided by 1 minus Xn. Okay, so far so good. What next? Well, the next step that we can take is we can write the same things or the equations again for stage n minus 1. What do we obtain? If we evaluate this, uh, this equation for n being n minus 1, we see that actually the y n equals the x n minus 1. Yeah? This index is 1 above that, this index is 1 above that, and that's actually what we exactly have obtained. So y n equals x n minus 1. This is the diagonal, that's the balance for uh, the balance line for the um, stage between stage n and n minus 1. And we can also write down the uh, thermodynamic, the equilibrium condition for the next stage. So we have simply to use one index less than we used here. So it's everything for y n minus 1. So y n minus 1 divided by 1 minus y n minus 1 equals alpha n minus 1 times x n minus 1 divided by 1 minus x n minus 1. And now we see that this x minus 1 actually equals y n. So we can sub, uh, substitute that by y n. So we have alpha n minus 1 times y n divided by 1 minus y n. And now we realize that actually this we have expressed already. This is this equation here. So we can plug in this equation to substitute this ratio. This way. So we have this alpha n minus 1 times the alpha n times this ratio. That is actually, and let me write it here, it's the alpha n times alpha n minus 1 times the xn, and xn is actually equals xb, so that is actually xb divided over 1 minus xb. We can continue with that, if you like. If we look at stage n minus 2, what do we obtain? We obtain, of course, one index less, so y n minus 1 equals x n minus 2, and also y n minus 2 divided by 1 over y n minus 2 equals alpha n minus 2 times x n minus 2 divided by 1 minus x n minus 2. You may guess already what happens already. So now the x n minus 2 can be replaced by the y n minus 1. So that is alpha n minus 2 times y n minus 1 divided by y n minus 1. And we realize that we have an expression already for that. So that equals actually that. So we have to plug in this for this last term. And we have alpha n, alpha n minus 1, alpha n minus 2 times this. So that is the result. Alpha n, alpha n minus 1, alpha n minus 2. This alpha n minus 2 is this one. The two others are these two times xb over 1 minus xb. And now we can generalize that to the last stage. If we look at stage 1, what happens? I leave out all the steps in between. There we, of course, wind up with, well, we see that that y is actually that of that stage. So if we write this expression for stage 1, we would have y1 divided by 1 minus y1 equals. Here we have all the alphas as a product up to that stage that we are regarding. So stage n minus one, uh, 2 was this one here, and here the alphas reach up to alpha n minus 2. So we have all the alphas starting from alpha n to alpha 1 for stage 1. So it's alpha n, alpha n minus 1, and so on, until alpha 1 times, and this is always the same, it's xb over 1 minus xb. Okay, so we are happy with that. And now we can realize, of course, that, well, for y1, what happens there? If we remember what we have drawn for the balances, we saw that the vapor from stage 1 is 
leaving the column is being condensed, well actually in the opposite direction, it's being condensed, and then is fed back as a free reflux. If we at that point would withdraw our distillate, that would have the same composition as the reflux, and of course since the condenser, as before, in deriving the mccabe method, is just a condenser from uh, vapor at equilibrium to liquid in equilibrium, no change in composition occurs, which means that, of course, this Y1 has to be identical to the XD. Okay, so we actually have now uh, XD, epsilon, of course, XD, I say it correctly, but I write it in the wrong way, divided by 1 minus XD, is alpha n, alpha n minus 1, and so on, to alpha 1 xb over 1 minus xb. And now we want to assume finally that the alpha 1 equals alpha 2, and so on, equals alpha n, and we just want to call that alpha. And then we realize that xd over 1 minus xd equals alpha to the power of n, so we have n alphas over here, and if they are all the same, it's alpha to the power of n, times xb over 1 minus xb. And now we can, of course, apply some uh, arithmetics, especially the logarithm uh, rules, and we can say that, well, let's do it in two steps, alpha n equals the alpha to the power of fn oops, is xd times 1 minus xb divided by 1 minus xd times xb, and then we can solve that for n, and we obtain n equals, and we actually know this is n min, we said in the very first, uh, for the balance for the first stage, that, that is n min, and we can directly write it here, is a logarithm of exactly that, xd times 1 minus xb divided by 1 minus xd times xb divided by the log, or the natural logarithm I wrote, log of alpha. Of course, you could use the logarithm to the basis 10, no problem, but you only have to do it consistently. If you apply the logarithm rules to that, you will wind up with that equation either way. And that's actually our final equation. And that's the Fenske equation, which has been published in 1932. Now the question is, of course, this alpha in here is, well, what is it actually? It's characterizing the vapor-liquid equilibrium, if we scroll up. We want to show this, and that's actually why we did not uh, simplify it up to here. We considered all the individual alphas over here. You realize that you have actually the product over, over all alphas that you substitute by the alpha to the power of n. So the alpha somehow, in, if you regard these two equations, is some geometric mean of the different alphas. So if you have a system that is non-ideal, where the alpha is not a constant, then you can um, approximate that by taking the geometric mean between the top and the bottom. Actually, you would have to multiply all of them at each, each individual stage and evaluate the, the, this product, but actually you don't want to do that. You are, want to have a simple equation on the calculator, and so you can just take the alpha 1 and the alpha n and use the geometric mean for that, and the geometric mean is because it has been a product in the original equation. So the alpha that you want to use is just the geometric mean of the alpha 1, that at the top of the column, times alpha n. And this is a second equation that you can evaluate if you have a non-ideal system. And with that, we have now the means to calculate the minimum number of theoretical stages as a function of the separation task characterized by xd and xb, and the alpha characterizing the equilibrium where if we have a non-ideal equilibrium, we can approximate this average alpha as the geometric mean between the alpha at the top and the alpha at the bottom of the column. So that is the first step for the Fenske underwood gilliland shortcut method, and I will show you the rest in the next video. Thank you for this video, and I hope I see, to see you again in the next video.